All right, welcome to episode seven of the Seattle Kraken franchise. Uh, we had a good start. <laughs> we had a good first month in episode five. In episode six, it kind of came off the rails a little bit. Uh, so we are struggling right now. We are basically one game over 500 if you count overtime losses. We're 18, 16, and one. Uh, our goalies are pretty much our issue right now. Uh, the problem is, is between episodes, I went ahead and looked at some different goalies uh, that were available. And the only ones that are available, and I'll show you real quick as to who they are. Um, the only goalies that look like they're going to be available, and I'm going by goalies matching the block, so I'm not looking for a goalie. Uh, that Basically, I'm trading for goalies that they want to they deal. Uh, the uh, let's see what teams had an available goalie. The Vegas Golden Knights had Mark Andre Fleury, but at 36 years old, he's not helping me, uh, you know, get get better younger. And the package that they'd want for him is so outrageous because of the trade value that he's list for that it would be a real tough sell for me to trade for Mark Andre Fleury. Uh, would he be an upgrade? Absolutely, uh, not a long term upgrade, but an upgrade. Uh, but it just it's not a good fit right now for uh, for the organization. Columbus has Elvis Merz Lincolns, uh, which is a guy that looks like he's struggling morale wise. He's listed as a starting goaltender, which is typically like an 83 or 84 overall, and right now he's sitting at an 81 overall. So he's really upset with his with his current setup right now. But probably because he stinks. He's an 887 save percentage. Um, I will say that that's way off form for him, comparatively speaking, because he's 922 last year to 887 this year. The team in front of him is dog awful, apparently. They are the bottom feeders of the division. So maybe a trade for him might be an option. He's a solid but not spectacular goaltender, 26 years old, uh, signed to a $4 million for one year remaining type of deal. So he'd be a rental style player. Um, this is the only guy I didn't check to see if they'd be willing to trade him. So I'm gonna check that now, and they want to give, they want me to give up Henrique or Forbert and Sundqvist. What about this way? Picks. I'd be willing to do picks. A third and a sixth for Merz Lincolns would not be a bad setup. I wouldn't mind that. Um, but the thing is, is it an upgrade? That's gonna be the question. Um, The, uh, the concern here with Merz Lincolns is that he might not be much better than what I currently have. The only good thing would be his youth and the fact that he's on the last year of his deal. So I could maybe deal Braden Holtby and get Merz Lincolns. So what I need to do real quick is I'm going to see, I'm going to exit out and go back in. I want to see if anybody's willing to trade for Braden Holtby. So I'm going to select Braden Holtby. He's not going to get a whole lot. Buffalo's willing to give up two-fourths. Uh, Vegas, oh, that's, I'm sorry, Chicago's willing to give up. Vegas is third and Nashville's fourth. Sorella in a sixth. That might be interesting to get a prospect, a forward prospect. Let me see what kind of setup he has. 19 years old. Oh, I don't have any, oh, this would be dangerous. Taking a kid like this would be dangerous. I don't know anything about him. I don't know if he'd fit anywhere. Um... And I'd be trusting I'd be trusting Chicago to be giving me good stuff, good information, and I'm not trusting that for anything. Uh, let's see what I get. So two fours. I'm, this time I'm going just by what's on my trade block. So basically, the only player I could maybe get is Nemesnikov and a third from Co the Coyotes. I don't mind this a fourth in the next two years for Holtby, and I'd be trading a third. So basically, I'd be essentially netting a higher fourth and I lower my third to a fourth that's not terrible I almost feel like I gotta take it at this point because Holtby is just he's not cutting it and I'm gonna do it I'm gonna pull the trigger um, oh that's gonna suck oh man I don't want him called up yet don't call him up uh, can I just oh I'm gonna you're gonna make me do it aren't you Oh, uh, gosh. I'm going to have to... I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. I know who exactly what I'll do. I'm going to call up Scott Darling. Uh, nobody's going to claim Darling on waivers. So, I'm going to finish that out. 
Okay, there he goes. So now in the NHL, I got Aiden Hill and Scott Darling. I will send him back down uh, as soon as I get finished. I do not want to do best lines because it will jack everything up I've built. So I'm going to go ahead and put Scott Darling in right now. I'm not going to keep him up here. Back to edit lines. Orlando Rodriguez substitute. Okay, so we're just going to get it situated where I don't have to tinkle with my lines any. We're just going to put all the crappy backups in really quick. And then I'm going to go find a trade. And I'm going to trade for uh, Elvis Mers Lincolns and hope for the best. That's a terrible way to go about it. But at this point, I'm pretty much out of options. So find a trade. A third and a sixth in 2022 so essentially I would not have a third or a six but I have two fourths I can live with that in 2022 I can live with that so Elvis Merge Lincoln's yep so there we go go to roster moves and we'll go NHL goalies we're gonna move oh Aiden Hill has already been situated and Scott Darling's back in the AHL good deal good deal edit lines and Merz Lincolns is an 84 overall, so that's actually a good thing for me. So, oh, no, no, no. Right now, Darling is in the middle of his run as the starter in the AHL, so I'm not going to interrupt that. And taking over is going to be Elvis Merz Lincolns for Braden Holtby. So that hopefully will be a wake-up call maybe for both Merz Lincolns and for Aiden Hill. Uh Another thing I want to check before I get started, since we're kind of in a, a lull period, uh, I'm hoping this video to get to the trade deadline. That's that's my goal is to get to the trade deadline. I want to look at players that I need to resign or think about resigning. Uh, Pavel Zaka is looking for an extension. He's interested in one. He's making 2.25. Let's see what kind of raise he may want. Over the next three years, he wants 2.175. That's not a terrible setback. Um, that I dare say that's a bargain, honestly. But I may hold off on that. Um, Nick Dowd, fourth line forward, what's he wanting? Oh, I can't re-sign him yet. My bad. Sorry. My bad. That was my mistake. For some odd reason, I thought he was re-signable. He's not. He doesn't show up as an extension. So basically, they have to show up as an extension for me to be able to re-sign him right now. So in the system... Do I have anybody that's in the system that wants a resign? Nope. Okay. So left wingers. I got Pierre Ingval is coming up for a contract. Oh boy. Okay. And he's gonna want top six time. Okay. Once top six. Oh, I exited out. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> Too many buttons. Alright, so Pavel Zak is a guy I'm interested in potentially re-signing. And in the system, I don't have any other centers that are really eligible or wanting. So do I, the question is, is do I want to re-sign Zaka? I have $17 million in cap space next year. Uh, so I will be limited in money next year a little bit. So that's kind of concerning. Um, but I could maybe move on from Adam Henrique and move Zaka to center and put a winger up there with Zaka and Declare. Maybe. Maybe try that. I don't know. Um, I'm going to hold off on re-signing Zaka. That's not something I want to make a decision on right this second. Uh, I might wait till near the end of the season to do that. Uh, plus, that's a good trade. Plus, he's an RFA, so it's not a real concern for me to to like have to re-sign him right this second. I can wait till RFAs and then just qualify RFA him and go on from there. So, nobody here. <clears throat> Pierre Ingball is another guy, RFA. Um, he's a guy who could potentially replace Duclair. I'm uh, not Duclair. Uh, maybe replace, uh, what's his face? Oh, shoot. Enrique. Maybe replace Enrique on that first line. Uh, if he can build up a little bit more, maybe get to 81, 82 overall. Maybe that's a guy I could consider to move up to that top line to take over for Enrique if he could do it. Uh, the concern is, is can he do it? I'm not sure. Again, an RFA, I'm not really concerned about it. Really, I'm looking to see if there's any UFAs uh, that are coming due. This is yeah, main roster. Okay, so Simon is a bench player. I'm perfectly okay letting him hit free agency. That's not a huge deal to me. In the system, McCarron's an RFA. Neeson and Ashen are bottom feeders in the AHL. I'm okay with letting him hit free agency. Uh, Jordy Ben, I'm okay with letting him hit free agency. Uh, McDermott, I'm okay with hitting free agency if I have to. I'd resign him if I wanted to, but he's not a necessity. So I really don't have a ton. That's a good thing, though. 
I don't have a ton uh, except for maybe Elvis Merz Lincolns. And since I've traded for him, he wants to resign here. But he's going to have to prove himself. He's going to have to improve significantly upon that 887 save percentage. I'm hoping it's a team Columbus put in front of him. Because if he can spark our team and get us some W's, I will give him an extension. Uh, I am looking for a spark right now, and I'm hoping that Elvis Merz Lincolns can give it to us. Um, so that's the thought process. We've made the trade. Braden Holtby is now a Columbus Blue Jacket. And Elvis, no, I'm sorry. Braden Holtby is now a uh, Buffalo Sabre. And Elvis Merz Lincolns, we welcome from the Columbus Blue Jacket. So we made a goaltending change. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot else out there that I can do from a scoring standpoint. And really, I feel like our scoring is fine. It's really our, our power play and penalty kill just need to step up, I think, more than anything. Uh, in our goaltending. If our goaltending and our any of our special teams step up, I think we'll be right back in contention for the top of the division. So uh, that's what I'm hoping for with the trade. We've got a nice little gap of games here, so there's no real pressure on Elvis to come right in and start right away. So I'm hoping that maybe uh, some days to kind of warm up to the new teammates will help and uh, get him situated. So what we're going to do is just check Burnaby is on Darling, so we got two games there. We got two games. Okay, so we need to go to Dallas. So right here to December 30th is where we're going to go. And we have Nemesnikov in a third for two-fourths. I tell you what, I want to look at Nemesnikov because I know he's a playmaker. Um, but does he fit? Forward line one. Oh, man. But, yeah, he's 79 overall. I would not want to put a 79 overall on the first line. I, I can't. I couldn't do that. I mean, and that's a that's not a guarantee fit. So, no. Nope. Uh, Jujar Kyra has been injured. Estimated return January 11th. All right. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move everybody up a line. Darlene's going to go down here on the fourth line. Then Gauden's going to hit the third line. And then uh, Pierre Ingvall is going to hit the second line. So there we go. So there's our improvement there. We'll jump him up a few lines. Uh, Glenn Denning still anchoring that first line in the AHL. That's a guy I wouldn't mind calling up if I have to, but a guy that's been a real nice player for us in the AHL, I feel like. So that that's good. How's Grachev doing? Eight goals and five assists in 21 games played. That's not terrible. That's not terrible at all. So, I would like to see some growth out of some of these players, but I'm not seeing a whole lot of growth, which is kind of disappointing at this point. Um, Ingball's grown a little bit. Grachev has not really jumped up as much as I had hoped. Uh, I was playing him in this position. I was hoping he might jump a little bit, but he's not really moving a whole lot. Um, McCaution has moved up a No, he hasn't moved up at all. Stanley has jumped from a 74 to a 75. I say jumped. He's moved up. Um, so I'm not seeing a whole lot of jump that I was hoping for. Uh, is that Zach Smith for a four and a five? And you give me a Boston's 2022 third. I'm willing to at least look because that's a guy. Zach Smith's left wing center can play some PK maybe. Top six forward lines and all power play lines as a grinder. Oh, I don't know about that. I would like tough guy aspect. I wouldn't mind that, but for one year at 31, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. It was good enough to look. Yanni Hockenpah has been injured with sore foot. Okay, the injuries are starting to roll now. We've been okay with injuries for most of the season, and now they're starting to roll in. Scratch players. Summer B, get in there, and then we'll move Trotman up to the top end. Okay. So there we go. Summer be in as a defensive defenseman. Yeah, we're just we're just not gonna be good down there <laughs> at all. It's just gonna be rough. Okay. So here we go. Let's see what we got. Okay, first oh lovely. First game is a loss. That's awesome. Awesome. So let's see. Four two loss. Okay, so Elvis comes in and immediately does nothing for us. <laughs> does nothing. So let's go back to Aiden Hill. Did his, his his stats actually went got worse. Oh Jesus! I have made a poor decision. I have made a poor decision. It was okay. I mean, 
I saved a little bit of money on the cap. They're both ending their contracts after this year. I'm giving them a shot to maybe do something, uh, and it's just not working. So we'll just we'll just deal with it. That's fine. Um, hopefully, Aiden Hill can maybe catch fire here and get us some get us some dubs because we could use some wins. And actually, I need to take out uh, Darling as well. Darling is out now. Darling is done in the AHL as well. So I should have. In the NHL, I should have Aiden Hill starting. In the AHL, I should have Connor Ingram starting. And I'm getting to the point now where I'm just about ready to, I'm just about ready to, to bite the bullet and, and maybe eat a waiver on Aiden Hill or even Elvis Merz Lincolns and just call up Connor Ingram and just let him play up in the NHL. I'm almost to that point. Not quite, but very close. Not trading Forbert. Oh, man. Gustav Grachev is, in, is injured. Fractured collarbone. First a concussion, now a collarbone. First year has been rough for the young man. All right, we're going to put him put in Gabriel Bork. That's what I got him for. I got him to be a good quality backup in case the young man faltered. And he's not really faltering so much as he's just breaking. So, okay, 6-2 loss, 19-19. God, we've got to get some traction. Got to get some traction, guys. 4-1 win. Okay, so immediately Carter Ingram comes in and loses two. Or th two out of three, I think. Okay, we'll swap. Elvis. Is it Elvis time? Is it Elvis time? I know it's I know it's darling time. Is it Elvis time? No, it's not Elvis time. I'm sorry. My bad. Aiden Hill can come back in. My bad, my bad, my bad. Swap that back. Okay, there we go. And let's get on this. Let's get on this. Okay, let's get to this day. Okay, Philippe Chalo didn't come out of the lineup, so that's awesome. Forbert, nope, not trading Forbert, but that might be something to do with the trade deadline. <clears throat> All right, excuse me. So, Washington, can we beat Washington? 4 to 2 W. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so that's good. I like that, okay, in the three wins. He's only allowed a total of four goals, and then in the one loss, he's allowed six. So, <laughs> come on, Aiden. Come on, Aiden. Get us. Okay, Nikita Nesterov on waivers. So, let's take a look at the, this guy. Minor top two defenseman, an offensive defenseman. He doesn't fit our scheme. Nah, I'll pass. Two years? Nah, I'll pass. Jujar Kyra is fully healed. Okay, that's good. So, Darlene. So, Ingvall get replaced with Jujar Kyra. And then we're going to replace uh, third line, goes Ingvall back in the third line. And then Gauden goes back into the fourth line. So there we go. Everybody back where they were. Um, although I might, mm, that's a consider. You know, actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to jump Ingvall to the, to the second line and Kyra to the third line to give these guys a boost. It's two grinders, though, which I don't typically like to have together. Um... Oh, it's three grinders. Never mind. Nope, nope, nope. Not doing that. Bad enough, I got two grinders. I'll tell you what. Can we? Nope. Not doing that either. Can I do this? Nope. That's not good either. So we're going to leave it like this. So there we go. Two grinders in that. Yeah, okay. So we'll leave it like that. Good Lord, man. It's feast or famine with Aiden Hill. My gosh. Eight to two loss and six to two loss. And then in the wins, he, he allowed four goals and three wins. All right, Aiden. Oh man, just I cannot buy a break with my goaltending situation right now. My, both my goalies are just, all, well, technically all three of them right now are just not well. They're not playing well. Uh, Yanni Hockenpah. Okay, that's good. All right, let's get Trotman for Hockenpah. And let's put Trotman back down here. Okay, thank you, sir. Forbert, nope, not trading Forbert. Two to one loss. That's a tough luck loss for Elvis. Elvis played well. All right, so now we're going to put Connor Ingram back in it. We're going to flip goalies for the AHL real quick. Okay, let's go back to the NHL side. All right, so let's go on and let's uh, get through these next four games. Two for the AHL, two for the NHL. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, man, they want to give up Oscar Lindblom. I would not mind that. 
I need to at least honor a look because it's a top six prospect. And I need to look and see what that's got involved. 24 years old, two-way forward. Forward line two and penalty kill lines. I've got a guy that fits that bill right now, and his name is Anthony Beauvillier. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that that's a, mm, that's a tough one. I mean, I like the PK. I like the forward line, too. I don't like the only left wing because Beauvillier is only a left wing. i tell you what I will look at, though. Let me look at... Because that might open up something, honestly. Beauvillier, how do you... Okay, you know, you're a second-line guy. So you're probably going to be the same type of scheme fit as what Lindblom is. So you're probably going to be similar to this player, which means that you wouldn't be any better for the first line than Beauvillier. Okay, so no. I'm not interested. As much as it pains me, I'm not interested. I mean, I, th I feel like it's a good deal. It just it doesn't help my team right now or in the future, I feel like. All right, so we got – let's go two more games, and we'll see what happens. Devin Taves has been injured with a fractured jaw February 5th. That's not good at all. All right, Jordy Ben, back in. Here we go. And that hurts because that's a minus five. Oh, man, a minus three. Oh, geez. That line went from – being oh yeah that's gonna hurt okay ouch I got no choice I got no choice okay Buffalo we can go two more games counting has released no I don't want to look at that just yet okay good we beat Braden Holtby <laughs> all right so we're starting to build up a little bit here we're starting to get a little bit of traction now which I dig. Let me uh, let me swap to AHL so I can monitor the win loss here. Johns, oh Max Domi, oh Max Domi. I've already talked to you, Columbus. Oh man. Okay, hold on. I've got to look because Max Domi is a good playmaker, but does he fit the scheme of this team? Forward line three. Forward line three. So that would push. Man, that's a... But he's only signed for a year. Oh, he's only signed for a year. I'd be trading Johns three years left. Um, and I'd have to call somebody up to play defense at this point. I'd have to send down a forward at this point and bench somebody or make a trade for some. I like this deal. I just don't know... I don't know if I like him on line three. I mean, he'd be a hell of a line three player, but man, I just I don't know. I don't. I like I like him. I really do like him. That's the frustrating part. I really do like the player. Max Domi's a good playmaker. I just don't think he. I don't want to stick him in line three. And have him not mesh anywhere else, which he doesn't look like he does. And I don't want to spend that kind of money on a third line player. I know I have James Neal playing like, you know, third line minutes at five mil, but that's kind of an exception to keep me at cap. I don't want to put a I don't want to put a permanent, like full time player long term on that third line at five, six million. Oh, I gotta say no. That hurts. That hurts my soul a little bit. Cause I really do like I really do like Max Delmy. Alright, so I can go all the way to the 30th? Yeah. 5 nothing loss. Okay, so... Oh, shoot. Who's in the game right now? Oh, man. Did I forget to swap out goalies? Oh, I may have forgot to swap out goalies. I did. I did forget to swap out goalies. It should have been Aiden Hill should have been in there. Oh, man. Well, okay. I'll do it now. Uh, no, I won't. I'll let it get to 24, and then I'll swap it out. So that's going to be backwards now. It's going to bug me. All right, so we're going to continue on. Uh, Elvis is going to get one more loss, and then we're going to swap over. Yeah, we'll get we'll give him one more. Maybe he gets the loss here. Nope. Does he get the loss? How about AHL? Do they get the loss? Nope, they're still winning. Boston? Did we lose Boston? 
Tanev is fully. Did I take Tanev out? Did Tanev move? Did it get hurt? No. Okay, there he is. Fully healed and available. Thank Jesus. All right. AHL. Grachev. A playmaker. Okay, cool. All right, so that's... Okay, cool, cool, cool. 4-3 win. Okay, Elvis. Elvis is winning. I'm going to keep him in. Okay, so that's an AHL swap. Let's see if I can get an NHL swap at the same time. Nope. How about now? Devin Taves is fully healed. Thank you. Thank goodness for that too. Okay, it goes from a plus three to a minus uh, to a minus three to a plus one. That's a four point chemistry swing. That's huge. All right, so there we go. Now Elvis is going to come out, and I believe I need to yep yeah, need to move both goalies. So Elvis is coming out, and Aiden Hill's going in. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep Aiden Hill in for four losses to kind of balance it back out, put us back even. And in the AHL, I'm going to put Scott Darling back in. Okay, and yeah, that's right. So Aiden Hill's probably going to get four losses here. Hopefully that doesn't completely tank us, but I've got to get it back on even keel. Give me a late. Okay, that's fine. Continue. 2 one overtime loss. Okay, so just immediately start uh, losing. That's good stuff, good stuff. Okay, do we lose here? Does Scott Darling lose it here? Yes, he does. Okay, so we'll send one more game. Okay. All right, so we're going to go to here. We're close to the trade deadline, so I'm going to try and work it to the trade deadline. Uh, maybe look at some trades, kind of show you guys what we'll be looking at going in. Um, Aiden Hill doesn't switch, but Scott Darling does. Connor Ingram back in. All right. So you... Aiden Hill has three more losses. Okay. So we can go. Does this game? This game? No, this game's not done. Okay. So we got. We'll go to here. Uh, Bork. Nope. 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 Okay. There's another loss for Aiden Hill. Let's go here. Nope. Not trading Bork. Connor Ingram has been injured with swollen knee. Is estimated okay that's our starting goalie lovely okay so uh, I'm gonna put Rod Reed in I'm gonna put Rod Reed in and I'm gonna let him take over the role of uh, losses I guess because yeah he because because uh, Ingram did not lose before he got hurt so I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Rodriguez play in the two loss ratio just like everybody else has uh, let's see if Philly do we lose in Philly we win in Philly. Uh, we'll skip one. Let's go Winnipeg. Okay, there's our loss, and one nothing loss. Man, that's a tough loss. I mean, Rodriguez played well. Loses one nothing. That sucks. Okay. Uh, goalies. Let's get Mars Lincoln's back in. Now we're back on pace with the starting unit. Four, five, and one in our last ten. That is rough going. That is rough going. All right, so we'll do these two. Oh no, <laughs> no, no, my best player, he's been my best player, no, that's heartbreaking, no, okay, well we're going to put Jankowski in there, special teams, uh, Jankowski go in, uh, uh, special team, four man power play, Jankowski get in there. I'm going to put Jankowski everywhere that uh, Beauvillier was and hope that he can hold it. All right, and then there is Jankowski. Man, that's a that's a hurt. That's a hurt injury. That hurts us big time. All right, so I can swap out. I feel bad for Rodriguez because he really didn't have – one of his losses really wasn't that bad, but I got to go with how this works, and that puts Darling back in the starter gate. And – we are two games away from the trade deadline. We're going to – or actually one game away, NHL. Two games away, AHL. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate to the 27th. Anaheim is pacing, placing Derek Grant on waivers. Who the heck is Derek Grant? Uh, somebody I don't want. Okay, decline. Christopher Tanev is fully healed. Was he out? Did I take him out? No. Okay. 
Ingram is okay. That's big. Okay, so we'll go goalies. Rodrigue, thank you for helping. I appreciate it. But Darling is in there for right now. Logan Stanley injured with a sore foot. Okay, that's not fun. We'll get Summer be in there to play. Okay. So let's see. 2 0 loss, 4 2 win. Okay, so we're at the trade deadline. We are 30 30 and 2. Let's take a look see. Uh, in the. Oh, boy. Wow. We have fallen off a cliff as far as over uh, the regulation losses have absolutely destroyed us. I mean, we are just. We're, we're a wreck because we don't get any points for those. So essentially, 30 games out of the season, we didn't get any points. So that is rough. Uh, we are we we need to be a seller. We need to be a seller at the trade deadline. We don't we we are not making the playoffs. We're 12 points out of a wild card, um, with no games in hand. So I mean, everybody's got 62 games. I don't see us making up 12 points. Uh, not with Bovillier out, and, and not with this roster. It's just it's it's a it's a first year roster. We're not the Vegas Gold Knights. We're not gonna we're not gonna go to the Stanley Cup Finals in our first year. Um, we lost way too many games in regulation, so we we need to be sellers at the deadline. Uh, some guys that probably need to go at this point. Um, I know Forbert's been getting a lot of interest. Maybe he goes. Johns probably needs to go. Um, maybe even maybe even a Devin Taves goes. Maybe I mean I signed him for a short term. Tanev might be somebody I consider trading if the, if the price is right. Um, on the forward side, there's really not a whole lot out there. I mean, the sad part is we're wait. I mean, he's got a 20 goal season, James Neal. On the third line, he's got a 20. That's just that's that just makes you frustrated. <laughs> I mean, to have that kind of scoring potential right there. I mean, bovillier has been wonderful. He's been way better than he has any business to be. Uh, Declare, okay, Declare's got 13 goals, 30 assists, 43 points. Sorelli's got 46 points. Adam Hen Adam Henrique is a guy that could go. We've got Ingvall in the in the, a in the AHL that might get called up, play wing. Uh, we we have some decisions to make, um, so we need to be looking uh, prospects, uh, preferably prospects that'll be ready to go in the next couple of years, if not this year or next year. Um, but yeah, we we. We need a culture shot, or we need to look at maybe hiring a new coach. But I looked at coaches as well in the light between the recordings, and I don't see anything out there that really jumps out at me. So I don't feel like that's the answer. Uh, maybe we go get a Max Domi and and put him on that third line, and or maybe move him to the first line. Well, we have to make some decisions. There has to be some major changes. We are not. This is not succeeding as it is, and there has to be some changes made. There are some players that are doing well. Uh, Cervelli is definitely doing well. Uh, Henrique is doing okay, but I think that's something where we could maybe tinker with that and be better. Zaka's really dropped off a cliff. Um, what about Declare? Declare, yeah, that, that first line has dropped off significantly. Um, so that's not a good thing. Uh, Jankowski, is, is a, he's a backup. He cares. But Bovillier has been solid. Bovillier, Cervelli, our second line I feel like has got some potential and promise. I think our second line is probably one of the better second lines in hockey. We just got to find some first liners to get in there and, and, and ham it up with those guys. So um, James Neal has been a revelation. That's been wonderful. Uh, I am so glad that James the Real Deal Neal has managed to uh, pick up that kind of pace uh, on the third line, which is his weakest line. He's managed to score 20 goals. That's amazing. Uh, Austin Watson, maybe I move him down to the fourth line. We need to make some adjustments. We need to make some juggles. Um, we are just not performing well, uh, and it, it, it shows. And the second line, like I said, is fine. Bovillier, Sorelli, and Anderson, I feel like those guys are, are good. They're a great second line. They're just not a first line, and we need to find some first line guys. Uh, Goth Spear has been good, I believe, minus nine, but uh, Tanev, been injury prone i may look at trading him may even look at trading gossip spear too i mean i gotta look at everything and see where we're at from that standpoint and see what we can move around and and, and move 
because we have to find some differences. I think Forbert probably is going to be gone. He's on a good contract, and people have been asking about him. Uh, Johns might be gone. Another guy on a good contract could move him. Um, and I have enough bottom-end defensemen that I, I might have to either get some prospects in or, or do something. But I could fulfill stuff from the AHL and pull stuff up if I need to because at this point – uh, we're 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 looking to hopefully not know. You hate to use the word tank, but we're about as close to tanking as you're gonna get right now because uh, at this point, uh, let's go back to the Pacific. So we are five points out. So five points out in our bottom end of our division, 57. So we got 54, 50. Wow, the Avalanche are wow, the Avalanche are that low. Man, that's rough. That's a bad year for Colorado. They got such good players. What the heck? Um, Minnesota. So we're not right now. <laughs> the sad part is, is we need to start losing. Um, so maybe it might not be a bad idea to trade our goalies, call up Connor Ingram, and let him. Oh, the Blue Jackets have thirty-one points. Oh my lord! Wow. So we're actually in the middle. So basically, as far as roughly. Uh, there's there's a lottery in the NHL, but we're going to be picking probably in the top 12. Uh, we'll probably be 12th or low or 12th or higher, uh, which is not good considering how bad of a season we're having. So we need to either tank, which I don't know if we'll be able to tank to the level of the Blue Jackets, but we need to look around at some trade prospects, maybe see if we can pull in somebody that's offensive minded, maybe that fits this scheme, which has been tough. Uh, but we need to make some looks and do some things. Uh, I will actually go through. Uh, real quick, I'm going to look at fine trade to end this video, wrap it up. Um, I'm going to look at skaters matching the block from every team. Now, this could change uh, come the trade deadline. So, this is not definitely not a locked-in thing. Um, but maybe, although it would be a pain in the bootay to trade for him, he doesn't even fit the scheme, so that sucks. But if I traded for him, I'd be firing a coach, that's for sure. But maybe look at some guys... You know, like, uh, let's see, is there any overalls? This is organized by trade value right now. Uh, Yannick Perot, Jacob Jakob Perot, sniper doesn't fit. That's our problem right now is our coach really, really inhibits a lot of what we can do from a trade standpoint of getting players in here. So I may, I may have to consider either firing the coach right now or – you know, looking at what I have on the roster. So that's, so I'm going to flip through and I'm going to try and kind of real quick just kind of show you the overalls and stuff. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the players themselves. I'm not looking for a goalie right now. I'm looking for players just, you know, that are tradable. Uh, preferably guys that would be easy to get, like Jakob Zaboral might be easy to get. Um, Siegenthaler. Uh, you know, guys that have a decent overall that might could start the next year or two for me. And all I see really right now is defensemen, uh, which is not great, but not bad either. So flipping through, I just want to kind of show this out. Yeah, Max Domi might be a guy I go after as well. That low trade value, I almost have to try and bite on it. Um, but what I'll probably do is I'm going to flip through these. If there's, uh, when I put this out, if you guys see any names, I might try and hold off on recording new videos until I get some, you know, get some feedback if I get any. But I'll give you guys some time to feedback on it and take a look, see at some of these players, and see if there's anybody we want to trade for. See if there's anybody you'd like to try and go get. I generally try to stick to team, uh, players that the team wants to give away because it makes it an easier trade. Um, but I'm open to about anything right now. I'm just kind of flipping through. I'm open to letting go of the coach. I'm open to a lot of things right now. So if you have any feedback or anything you want to let me know, leave a comment down in the video. Uh, I'll be sure to read and respond to anything that gets res that gets replied to or gets commented on. Uh, if you guys have any feedback at all, I'm open ears right now because there's a lot of things that need to change, and I'm open to even looking at changing the coach, um, changing the culture, whatever we got to do. This is not working through one year. I realize it's a little knee jerky to to kind of be going this at this rate right now, but uh, we have to get this thing right on the rails and if the coaching staff is not right on the rails then we need to move on from this coaching staff so uh, i'm not tied to this coaching staff at all so if if we need to move on from them i have no problem with doing so and getting a more offensive minded coach and maybe 
maybe going a little bit more razzle dazzle. So uh, I believe that's all the teams. Yeah, that's all the teams as far as their trade values and their players are willing to trade. If there's anybody that caught your eye, let me know. Pause the video if you need to. Uh, again, uh, if you're enjoying the series, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, appreciate you watching the video. Hope it's entertaining. And uh, until next time, we'll catch you later.